Hopper here, down in the basement tonight, doing a little work on the sump pump. You can see I've got three separate pipes coming out. This third pipe was added because of last summer we had a, a pretty bad flood in the area, and my main sump pump here could not keep up, and we had a little bit of flooding. Not too bad compared to some other people in the area. We had about six inches of water in the basement. The main sump pump, which is a pretty big pump, just could not keep up because of all the rain we had and all the water we had around our house, which is not usual for this area to have this much standing water. So what I did was I threw a second pump in so that when the water gets too high in the pit, the second pump will kick on. It's actually sitting on top of the other one and it comes out a separate pipe. Uh, that's the main pipe right there. So this comes out the separate pipe. If the water level gets too high, it'll pump. This pump will kick on, pump out another pipe. Hopefully keep the basement from flooding again. But you can see this installation isn't perfect. It's done rather quickly last summer with water, standing water in the basement. So now I've got some time. I'd like to get this done a little better. And I've also upgraded the battery backup pump, which is this one here. You can see it's the basement watchdog. It runs off the battery here. And this will alarm if your first pump doesn't keep up and the float for the battery pump hits. And we had this broken at the time. Uh, my wife had been down here because we had some problems and she had broke the float on that pump. So we didn't have the warning that night. So I've actually upgraded this pump to a bigger battery pump, which should help. And I'm getting a new pump for the main pump. And then that pump is working fine, so I'm going to put it for the backup pump. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and pull the backup electric pump out and get it out of the way so I can get to the other ones to get them changed. Go ahead and pull the clamp loose on the bottom of the check valve, that's the black part there, and slid it up and then tighten it so it won't fall off. I'm going to go ahead and unplug this pump and then wiggle it until it comes out and then get it out. Now that I have that pump pulled out of the way, I'm going to go over here to the one on the left and that is the battery backup one. I'm going to go ahead and take it off the same way right at the check valve. That way my other pump, my main pump, can continue to run if it needs to. And check valve should work and keep water from coming back out here while I'm working on it. Here's something I found now that I have the backup battery pump out that was wasting a lot of electricity. The check valve here was leaking by, so that was letting the water come up and go right back down into the pit. So I have a new check valve. I'm going to be replacing all the check valves at this time anyway. But you can see how much water is in the bucket. So that's all water that would have went right back into the crock. But now I'm going to go ahead and pop that check valve off and slip this one on. And tighten it down real quick. So here's the check valve that was leaking by. There's quite a bit of debris on top of it. There was a piece of a zip tie that I pulled out of here already. And quite a bit of other mud and slime and rust. And... When I tried moving it from the bottom side, flipping it up, it wouldn't even move. So, needless to say, this wouldn't even have uh, worked if the pump would have kicked on. So this is going right in the trash. Got the new battery pump down in there, and I've clocked it this time so that it's right there. Now I'm going to try to clock. When I put the other new pump in, I'm going to turn it that direction and then hopefully leave room for a stand for my backup electric pump to be right there. That's the goal anyway. But I'll sleep a lot better tonight once I get this one hooked up because then I will have an alarm if the water gets too high. I'll give you an audible alarm if you're home. If you put the alarm up to Wi-Fi to notify you if, if the pump kicks on also which is what I probably will do eventually. So I'm going to go ahead and get this 
pump hooked onto the check valve now and then start getting it hooked up to the battery. There's a probe here that goes in through the battery cap. And that just tells you the condition of your battery. I hooked up the red wire to battery positive, the black wire to the ground, and pulled in through the battery cap. Now we're ready to shut this. See that the pump is on. It's not plugged in though because I don't have the float installed yet. And it's saying that the power is out because I don't have the charger installed. So I'm going to go ahead and install the charger. And then this light should light up. And then I'm going to install the float and let it settle out before I plug in the pump. Float set just a little bit higher than the water reaches before my main before my main pump kicks on. So if that makes that float go up and trip, I know there's a problem with my main sump, which is just how we want it. Okay, now the only lights that are on are system operating and charging, which are green ones, which are what you want to see. All of the ones on the left there that are red are off. So if we get a trip now, we know there's a problem with the main pump. Here we are a couple of nights later, and I just went ahead and unhooked my main sump pump. So we're going to test the battery backup pump and see what happens. It shouldn't take it long. I don't know if you can see down in there good. The water is almost up to the float on the battery backup pump, and we'll just see what happens. I just heard the pump kick on. You can see the floats up. There it goes. If you hook it up to the Wi-Fi right there, there's another little kit you can buy who will alert you. I believe it's in an email. And um, so that's another option if you want it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and swap out my main pump. The same thing as I did with the backup pump. I'm gonna disconnect it from the bottom side of the check valve. Take this pump out. I'm going to hook this pipe up on my brand new pump here. That's a one horsepower, one of the bigger pumps you can get from your box stores, Home Depot, Lowe's. The thing I need to do is unplug the main pump. have to get the camera out of the way probably wrestle this thing a little bit to get it because it's got a, the PVC has to slide out of there so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll show you what I'm I have the PVC slid out of the check valve now you can see the check valve is leaking a little bit now it's just a matter of pulling it out and getting the pipe switched over these pumps are quite similar in design you can see the new one does seem to be a little bit more heavy-duty than the uh, old one look at the size difference so hopefully this one will run less I'm gonna get it switched out right now Okay, at this point, while the battery pump is off, I'm going to go ahead and quickly swap out the check valve on the main pump. Okay, I think I have the pump oriented the way I want it. I went ahead and slid the clamp on. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and try to get it down in the pit where I want it. We are ready to plug the new pump in and see how it works. Okay, it runs pretty quiet, pumps the water down pretty good. I think this is a success. I made some adjustments on the pipes to get them to line up straight and to get things to fit the way I wanted it down in the pit. I zip tied all the wires to get them out of the way and have everything kind of neatened up a little bit. And I think I'm happy with the way this setup is now. So my main pump is right here. My backup pump is just out of view under the lip of the cement there. And I have my float for my battery backup set where I like it. The only other thing I'm going to do, this would be perfect probably... 90% of the time this setup, but last summer if you check in mid-Michigan flooding history, we had a major flood here, and my one pump was running full time and could not keep up because there was so much water, the woods were flooded right outside my house, so this one pump just could not keep up, so that's why I added the second pump that will set just higher than this. I just have to figure out a means to get it to set the height I want. And then I will have the main pump, a battery backup pump, and a secondary pump. And we should be good. We, hopefully we never have a problem again. The only thing I'll, I'm going to have to do now is keep uh, maintaining. So, so probably every year I'll change the check valves out. And every two years I will move the main pump up and make it the auxiliary pump and then get rid of the auxiliary pump and just keep rotating them through just, just to make sure that I always have good pumps in there. You can see how much water I have coming in right now. There's a trickle coming in the other side. This isn't even really that wet of a time here. It's the winter. It's pretty cold out and I have that much water coming in. So that is why we're always have to be up on our sump pumps. I really would have preferred the person who built this house didn't put a basement in, but that's what I got, so that's what I have to deal with. Here's what I came up with for my pump stand. I need something to get it up off the bottom of the pit, so it'll be a secondary pump and only trip if the other one doesn't. So I made this out of half inch PVC. The pump has three legs here. It did have like support to make them a little strong. I had to trim that a little bit so that the PVC will slide over it. And we just slide it on like this. And that will get our pump that far off the bottom of the sump. And it's completely plastic so there will be no rotting like if it was wood or rusting if it was metal. I'm going to lower it in now and see how it works. Should work fine right there. I have the backup electric pump coming out its own pipe and it goes out over there through another hole that we had in the wall. Not ideal, but at least it has its own separate, so if you have any problems with the other one, you're good. Here's everything all hooked up. You have your primary electric pump, your backup battery pump is down over here, and then my backup electric pump, which is up on the PVC stilts, is right there. So 
This is the most foolproof setup I can think of for keeping your basement dry.